What was the one thing that you got absolutely right uh, in being able to take the enterprise consistently to the next level and the one thing that you did disastrously wrong? Well, I mean, the list of things disastrously long can be much longer. The worst, but. the worst. <laughs> the worst. Um, I think, and actually that's something that, that um, uh, Harsh has actually talked a lot about, uh, which I think in, when I talked about over-investing in pathologists, what I did not do was not over-invest in talent in India. So, for example, uh, while we were growing, you know, as a small firm, you're, you're just trying to sort of, you know, figure out how to grow and you're trying to make sure your profitability is sustainable and you don't necessarily get really good talent. And as a small firm, you know, you can't even attract really good talent. So, uh, at that time, I wish I had hired a better quality of professionals at an earlier stage. Uh, maybe around 2005, 2006. What stopped you from doing that? Was uh, it the money? Was yeah. it you didn't find the people? It was three things. One, that you know, you think that as an entrepreneur you can do everything, hmm. and you don't necessarily need people uh, who are better qualified or it's better. It's a common problem. Trained. I hear this from all right? entrepreneurs. Second is, you know, you just don't have enough money, or you know, you're 20, 30 crores in revenue. You have a few crores in profit to attract any talent. You think, oh God, how do I pay one crore to a you know, big fat professional yeah. uh, at the time. So that just seems beyond your means. And third, you don't even know where to go and attract talent from because you're such a small business that, you know, good professionals don't want to come and work with you. You know, it's a, it's a problem I've heard uh, that afflicts most startups that you, when, you're, when you're short of cash and you're trying to do many different things uh, at the same time and you think, you know what, I'm good at this, I'll hire someone who's not very expensive. Maybe he's a little lower down the talent chain or she's a little lower down the talent chain, but I can work with her and make her better and it'll work out for me. And then you do that for every vertical job that, that exists in your organization till you finally discovered that you have a reasonably okay team, but you don't have the A-class team that it, you need to be able to push this to the next level, and suddenly it's all your burden, right? Absolutely. And, and I'll tell you, having now gone through the other phase of hiring a really good quality and capable team, now it's, it's, there is, it's, there's a delay because uh, you know, now the organization is significantly bigger. When you have, you know, 2,000 centers across, you're, you're fixing the airplane while you're flying. Yeah. So the basic systems, the basic processes, the basic things that you should have done in 2005 when you were just starting on your growth path, you're doing 10 years later. So they become far more complex. They become far more difficult and far more um, inefficient to actually drive changes. Then what lands up happening is you start doing things more incrementally because you don't want to affect day-to-day -day operations. So it becomes a cycle. So you somewhere have to, to break through that. You have to be able to then make some reasonably disruptive changes in your own business and be able to take the trade-off of saying, yes, some things will get affected, but I'll let me stop for a year, two years, let me consolidate, and then let me start building.